Here's our tale of the tape for this heavyweight battle. Attic Bowie ranked number one. Wilness number four. They're both in their early 30s. Attic Bowie tipping the scales at 263. That's about 14 pounds heavier than Jafar Wilness. With professional experience, the edge six fight edge goes to Jafar Wilness. And KO percentage goes to Benjamin Attic Bowie, where you'll see Jafar Wilness more as that inside pressure fighter. Fight metric report, Benjamin Attic Bowie's only been knocked down one time, but he's dropped 11 other fighters. As for Wilness, he gets knocked down almost as much as he does the knocking down. Let's take a look at my keys to glory for this belt. And for Benjamin Attic Bowie, he needs to keep this fight at long range. He needs to establish his straight punches, try to sit behind that jab and really mix up his levels, hit the body, attack the legs of Jafar Wilness. Where Jafar Wilness needs to keep the pressure on like he did in their first fight. He needs to get on the inside, work his combinations to the body, mix in his uppercuts, and really look to attack the legs. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. He's coming off a huge win over Jamal Ben Sadiq at Glory 53 that signaled his Glory return. His fight career resume consists of 31 wins, nine losses, one draw, and eight of those wins coming by way of knockout. He stands six feet, five inches tall, 1.95 meters, and he weighed in at fight time at an even 249 pounds, 112.9 kilos. He's here in Chicago tonight, fighting out of Utrecht, the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jafar Wilner. His opponent standing on my right and fighting out of the white corner. The only three-time Glory Contender Tournament champion as a professional. 30 wins with five losses and 18 career knockouts. He stands six feet, six inches tall, 1.98 meters, and he weighed in at 263 pounds, 119.3 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Bucharest, Romania. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mr. Gentleman, Benjamin Abdekbui. And your referee for this contest is Oscar Martinez. Front and center, sir. Front and center. Gentlemen, you have your final instructions. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Any questions? Questions, touch them up. Back to your corners. Their last Judge. battle, October 9th, 2015, Judge. was one of the best heavyweight fights of Judge. the year. Jafar Wilness threw 354 strikes. Attic Bowie, 246. That's outrageous for this Fighters. division. Yeah, it was ridiculous. They were non-stop combo exchanging back and forth. And what Jafar Wilness did well is he got on the inside, attacked the body, mixed in uppercuts, where Attic Bowie just kept countering back. And right away, you see him trying to stay behind his jab because he knows Jafar wants to get inside. Attic Bowie in the white gloves, fighting out of Romania. Jafar Wilness from the Netherlands in the black. If it's anything like their first fight, they will land power punch after power punch. Attic Bowie's got a really good jab, so that's why Jafar wants to kind of get inside and jam his punches. According to the odds makers out in Las Vegas, Nick Kalekis has Benjamin Attic Bowie as a minus 400 favorite. Four to one, ladies and gentlemen. That seems very large. Especially considering in their first fight, it was a split decision. The Attic Bowie really throwing some pro punches, trying to maybe set up his low kicks and body shots. But since their last meeting, we saw Benjamin Attic Bowie change camps. He's now training with Rico Verhoeven and Dennis Crowell, super pro. And he was a lot more focused, Attic Bowie, in this camp. He spent the full seven weeks in Holland training for it. There's Jafar and Coliseum. The new gym that they just opened, a huge facility. Uppercut split the guard there for Jafar Wilness. His uppercuts are one of his best punches. And his 
especially when he rips the body, then goes up for that uppercut. Very dangerous. Finally, Adekui sitting down on some punches now as both men try to feel each other out a little bit. First minute and a half. A push kick there from Willness. Adekui just missed with an uppercut. Willness a little bit of a slow starter, at least he was against Jamal Ben Sadiq. Lost the first round, then just came out to clubber the big Moroccan yeah. after that. Once he gets going, you're going to see a lot of good volume work, especially with the body. Attic Bowie said he's not looking for the knockout tonight, but feels if he can land one big power punch like that. He could get it. There's a second. Nice right hook, right uppercut from Attic Bowie. So that probably turned the round in the favor of Adik Bowie if he was indeed behind it all. Those two big punches. Fight your way out. In the kickboxing, Joe, you can't afford to give a round away. No, with only three rounds, and you lose the first round, you got a lot of catch-up work. Yeah, a lot of pushing. In boxing, when you're going 10 or 12 rounds, a round off here or there, no problem. Some five-round fighters might even take a round off, win four, but three rounds, you got to press. So a good opening round. Looked like it leaned towards Attic Bowie. A couple power punches and a high kick. Yeah. Again, similar forward pressure from Jafar Wilness trying to work that body, but Benny's doing a good job at countering back, founding his right hook there. There's that right uppercut he follows. Good combination. Then he tries moving the guard of Wilness. Wilness has a good high guard where he keeps his hands pinned to his head. Attic Bowie's finding some good openings. Boy, imagine getting hit with a Benny Attic Bowie uppercut right to your nose. Far Wilness is extremely Ooh, is tough, no one, doubt about that. Working. He's going to come a little bit more now. Yeah. yeah. But he absorbs big back. shots against Big Ben. Yeah, very tough. Very can take a shot. You give a good shot. He came out in round two against Big Ben and turned the fight on its head. Let's see if he can do the same here against Attic Bowie. Yeah, you heard Attic Bowie's Dennis Crowell say, you know he's going to turn it up now. So they've anticipated fight. the pickup in pace from Jafar. Round two. Benny really looking for that right hook. Now going as a southpaw. Seems to really be hunting for that right overhand. Willness plotting forward, not throwing nearly as many strikes as we saw in their first contest. The though, Joe. Yeah, no, he's staying pushing. behind his guard a little bit more. But this could be the improvements of Attic Boy. See him switching stances. The first more. He's not letting Attic Boy get too much momentum. Sorry, Willness gets too much momentum. Willness still waiting to land one big shot. Trying to get some momentum. There's another uppercut. Nice counter from Attic Boy. Far Willness used to be very good at soccer. Then at the age of 22, wanted to test himself as an individual. Took his younger brother Jason. Kickboxing gym in Utrecht, Netherlands, Coliseum, and that's where he's been since day one. Another high kick from Benny. This is not what we expected from Jafar Wilness. But what Attic Boy is doing well is he's staying busy. By staying busy against someone with a forward pressure high shield, it kind of slows down the output. But is Attic Boy slowing down? Is that the plan? Let Jafar come in there, grind him out. But he's got to pick up the pace. He's down in that first round. Adik Bowie not necessarily in a hurry to get out of the corner or off the ropes. Why is that? No, he's, he doesn't mind the, the in-close fighting. He seems to be doing well in there. There he's pivoting out. But it might be more exhausting for him to continually move and move and get his feet moving. So he seems to be content sitting in that close range and trying to mix in his right hand and his uppercut. And some good knees as well. Now Will is starting to pick up the output a little bit. Nothing too effective though. 
Right hand from Matty Pui. Whoa, was that a knockdown? They're gonna give it a knockdown. Three, Jafar Willis saying he slipped. Four, he was, I think he was trying to throw a five, spinning back fist. Yeah, he keeps pointing into his glove. Seven, I don't know what he means by that. Hey, look at me. Hands up. He's saying maybe Hands the up, shot hit the me. glove. Ready? Fight! Well, now a lot of work to do for Willis. Looks like he's gonna need a knockout. Oh, and that is a straight oh. knockdown for sure for corner. Benny. Right two, at the end of round two. Three, four, Jafar Willis tried to five, make up for that knockdown and six, then got caught. Seven, eight. Hands up. Well, you know, it really doesn't change much, Joe. He needed a knockout either way. Absolutely. But a great round two for Attic Bowie, who gets not one, but two knockout, knockdowns. Here's the first one, Joe. Tell us why Attic or why Jafar thought it wasn't one. Well, I know from the referee's point, yeah, it, it looked like his glove got stuck and pulled. Yeah, that, that didn't look like a knockdown. It looked like his glove got stuck. He blocked the head kick. Continue to come forward. I think this was the second one, and that was the legit knockdown where he was able to clip the temple with the right hook. You know, I think you're right. Wilness lost focus for a little bit. He knew there was just a couple seconds left in the round. He didn't think that was a knockdown, so he went right after him, and it yep. cost him. Absolutely. He came in, got him extra aggressive with his pressure, and that's when he got caught. Well, three minutes now for Wilness to completely turn things around here and knock out the number one ranked contender in the heavyweight division. These good friends hug it out. Three minutes to go. Yeah, they sparred in the past, and they said they're friends, but tonight they're going to be enemies. And then after again, they'll be friends again. But here comes Attic Boy. Oh, Wilness not, not on clear legs right now. You can see they're still a little off balance. All five judges scoring that 10-7 as they should have. There's that body work from... Jafar Wilness, which I thought I was going to see a little bit more from, but good help from Benny in this fight. Believe it or not, Wilness has been busier and more accurate. But when you're knocked down twice, it's hard to win rounds. There's another knee from Attic Bowie. Jafar throwing one of his own. Does Wilness have the power to end this fight, Joe? Absolutely, he's got that power, but he's got to find the right timing with it. He can't just open up with a single shot. I feel if he's going to do it, he's got to put some punches together. Maybe go head, body, head with his combinations to try to move out of Bowie's tight defensive guard. Tried to exchange hooks there, and out of Bowie got the better of it. Stairs, they exchange low kicks. Far's not going to back down. He's going to stay head to head and keep fighting. There he goes, trying to put some punches together. But Attic Bowie's really good defensively. Attic Bowie trains with Rico Verhoeven. They're sparring partners, they're friends. That's why they may not want to fight a third time, but Attic Bowie's right. getting to a point now, Joe, where he says, listen, yeah, enough's enough. Out. I think I'm the best fight. heavyweight in the world. I got a chance to prove it, I want to do it. Yeah, they're waiting for Glory to call that fight. They're not really looking for it, but they've learned so much together to have the two best heavyweights in the world training together. You got to think how much value you're getting out of them. And you know, Attic Bowie knows deep down if he can beat Rico or not. He spars with him every week, and he said, listen, some days he gets me, but some days I get him. Watch yeah, those heads, guys. Just over a half minute to go. Wilness opening up a little bit. Landed a few through that guard of Attic Bowie. That pressure that he has, he could probably go two more at this pace. Impressive conditioning from both gentlemen. 
Thomas getting his shots in late, but it's going to be too late as Attic Bowie, Good. thanks to two knockdowns in round two, work, will win again this time over Jafar Wilness. Yeah, and it was a, a similar fight to that first one, but we saw involvement in Benjamin Attic Bowie. We saw him be a little bit more technical, a little bit more defensive, and being first really seemed to slow down Wilness slightly. Not much, but slightly. The official decision when we return to the Sears Center, you're watching Glory 58 Chicago. We welcome you back to the greater Chicago area. We're at the Sears Center and our co-main event just wrapping up between Benjamin Attic Bowie and Jafar Wilness. And Wilness just couldn't get things going tonight. Yeah, he pressured a lot and he, like he always does, he's got good forward pressure, good boxing, but Attic Bowie was on tonight. He found his shots and got a dominant win. You want to subscribe to the Glory Calendar for alerts, live events, promos, digital content, and more. Go to glorykickboxing.com slash remind me. Joe, sometimes I have to turn that on, too, to make sure I know yep. where I'm at and where I'm going. Me, too. I know next we're headed to Amsterdam. I'll be there this Thursday for the press conference, and then the following Saturday, we rumble in the heavyweight division. Who knows? Maybe Rico's next opponent, if he beats Guto, will beat the gentleman. Yeah, and he looks great in this fight. He showed a lot of good fighting from the in close range. He knew Jafar Wilness was, you know, gonna come forward with that volume and that pressure, but he was able to find his right hand and got this nice knockdown at the end of the second round. Two knockdowns in that second round. You know, Jafar Wilness really had to push the pace like he always does, trying to find some offense, but at that point, it was a little too late. Attic Boy with a dominant win. Here are the final statistics. Jafar Wilness, at least in the first and third round, landed more strikes, threw more strikes, but he couldn't overcome those two knockdowns in the second round. Looking at the, the strikes, you got more of the punches from Jafar Wilness, where we saw a lot of good knees from Attic Bui in that close range fighting. None of them were able to connect, but they were very close. And it was probably those, it had to have been those two knockdowns that made the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. All five of our ringside judges see them out and score them out the same. 29-26, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, Benjamin Adegbui. You got a big Rowaney contingent over there. What's your message to your countrymen? Hi, Lomonia! Yeah, that's what's up. Hey, congratulations on the win. Take us through that first knockdown. Jafar seemed to think your hands just got tangled up and he went down. Yeah, uh, I was not, uh, I didn't see exactly what happened. I knew I throw a left hook, but uh, if he landed, then he goes down. Second one was also clean, so. Yeah, no doubt about the second one. So everyone wants to know now, when are you going to fight for the world title again? You keep winning fights, you keep winning tournaments. When do you want to fight Rico Verhoeven? Yeah, you're still asking me the same question, you know. It's Glory who will have to put Rico. I, I for sure want the belt, I want the number one spot. I want Rico, I want Badahari, doesn't matter. Just give me the best fighter in Glory and I'll fight him. He's the number one ranked heavyweight in the world today. One more time, everybody, for Mr. Gentleman, Benjamin Adegbui. Congratulations, Benjamin Adegbui. Looking really impressive in his win. He knew Jafar Wilness was coming with that pressure, and he was able to get those two knockdowns, which gave him that solid win.